Hello and welcome to Baboonery Movie Reviews Volume 3. Why have I just said Volume 3? It's the third Baboon. Ah, <laughs> great start, really, isn't it? Brilliant. Go. Now, tonight I was going to go and see Fifty Shades of Grey as it came out last night, and I thought tonight I was going to see Fifty Shades of Grey. But don't expect to see the new Fifty Shades of Grey as the fourth film in this review. I say that because the last two, well, the first two Baboonries have had like Fifty Shades of Grey at the end of them. Yeah? But not this one. Now there will be quite a bit of theme, and I'm talking about theme here as I think three out of the four of these films, I have no idea really what these films are going to be, are going to be foreign films. And I do apologise in advance if I just go, there we go, that's what I'm talking about, because I'm going to be talking about Shin Godzilla. Now Shin Godzilla, Shin means new, true. It, there's a few different versions of what Shin means actually in the Japanese law of what Shin Godzilla is. Now I'm a massive fan of Godzilla and there's been so many Godzilla movies now. Shin Godzilla's came out and confused a lot of people because Netflix has a Godzilla TV series out. Godzilla 2 is on its way from the creators of King Kong and Godzilla. This is going to be a lot going on but this one's came out and one's like what? Now Shin Godzilla is a full blown remake from the original Godzilla. Let's just get that out there. Now you can get two versions of this and actually it might be quite handy when I think about it. There we go, Shin Godzilla. Um, brilliant cover. A lot of people have picked it up not realising. A lot of people do think this is actually the sequel to Gareth Edwards one. Now Shin Godzilla, you're in for a treat here or you're in for like what the fuck's going on here? Now this is a full on reboot and unlike the American ones where all of a sudden whoa where the fucking massive creature come from. Like that thing the size of a building. I mean seriously the Matthew Broderick one and the Gareth Edwards one it's like whoop there we go. Where's the big How did we not see that in this day and age? Where's that come from? Saying that the original Toho one is like whoa where did that come from? It's like, whoa, it's a massive dinosaur running riot. <laughs> like, seriously, how did you not see that coming? Anyway, this comes in full blown Japanese. You can get an English dub, but it comes, it looks a little bit low budget as soon as it comes in on, but it also has that Japanese look to it, that style, that coldness. I'm forgetting this is a baboon I was going on a full blown rant there. And there is some very artistic shots in it, some great camera work. But it screams a little low budget and relies heavily, heavily on CGI. Unlike its ancestors which were all based on super practical effects. But what this is great is you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. All of a sudden this giant blob comes to the show with big bulging eyes. You think what the fuck is that? It looks like a turkey getting penetrated from behind. Its eyes are absolutely pulsating out of its head. Hey, whoa, that's different. Whoa, eh? Now in theory of this, it's an abomination coming to show and trying to breathe, there's blood going everywhere, like some kind of weird cesarean. <laughs> and as he's going along the town, destroying it like Thomas the Tank Engine on crack cocaine, he decides to evolve. He grows a tail, he grows a mouth, he then stands upright and grows arms to hold himself upright, and then he starts walking around. He then starts blowing the shit out of stuff with radioactive breath, and then firing lasers from everywhere, which way but Lucy said, what? what the fuck? Eh? Now for true fans of Godzilla, I thought this was a great rebirth, re imagination. I don't know where to go for it, because Godzilla, like the American ones, has been treated like a force of nature, where he comes to show and just fuck this place up. The CGI is great one minute, then drops the next. Um, it does rely heavily on CGI, which is a shame. In a way, it would be great to see some practical effects, but this has been done on a low budget. I've heard it's a fan movie that got the okay, but... There's a lot more going on here. There's a lot of talk in mind. Like a lot, a lot, a lot of talking. Like me talking right now, there's a lot of talking. And if you're watching it with subtitles, it's hard to follow. And sometimes it's like, what's this again? But if you're a true Godzilla fan and you want to see something done really well, you just have a great time. It's worth the watch. Definitely worth owning. Now, while we're talking about foreign films, I recently was in London and I picked a film called Char. Um, three pound, this is uh, Char. Um, mankind, this time, Mankind is the pork. Now I say chaw like that. Uh, I've learned the Annie, so I don't have to go chaw. Um, I watched this and it was all in Korean with the additional subtitles. Again, when this started, it had that kind of um, foreign look to it. It had, you know, I mean, don't get us wrong, a lot of these are shot on massive scale because they've got some amazing landscapes. But this starts up up in the hills and there's a lot of print division going on there, pig style. <laughs> but anyway, they find this grave on Rob's. I think, right, right, really, what's going on with this film? Because I've had a few films like Pig Hunt, which. I put that on, think it was going to be a giant pig movie, and there was lots of, well, there was a big pig eventually, but there was a lot of like satanic moody rituals, that's a random one if you want to watch something random. But sure, I put it on and like, straight away I was trying to follow the subtitles and the storyline's fucking weird. There's a cop from, it's a stereo, stereotypical style, what am I going for there? The cop basically doesn't, it wants to be promoted and he gets posted to a fucking new town. The town so happens to have a problem with grave diggers they think, and uh, the guy who's transferring has a pregnant wife. And his mother is batshit crazy. So as the town folk so suddenly start to realise that they've got a bit of a like a serial killer on the hand and they're trying to keep it down the down low, 
Jaws anyone? <laughs> you know, it does appear a lot of tribute to Jaws is. Jaws are pigs. So the guy gets to the town, he's getting ready, he's trying to control his mum is batshit crazy. And like as you're trying to follow the subtitles and what's going on, and a lot of people trying to act serious and all that, all of a sudden his mum's fucking freaking out doing some crazy shit and it's like, what the fuck? Is this a comedy? Like seriously, I thought this was gonna be a piggy movie. Like pig pig pig. Now, when a pig turns up, it looks amazing, but it's not realistic hundred percent of the time. It's got that anime twist to it in ways. Just a little bit. But when this gets going, it gets mint. It gets really going in, they get really in it. There's one bit where they're trying to make an escape from the piggy and they're on the train tracks and they're going like that, you know, pumping away, trying to get it going. Like faster, faster, we need to go faster. And the two of them at the same time are just rotting away. And they're going along this train tracks and it's done really funny, it's got this little squeaky thing. And by this time, I was so rooting for the pig. So when the pig runs down it, I mean the warthog or whatever it is, when the pig runs down the train track after it, I was like, piggy, 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 piggy. I was proper in for it. And when it gets there, it gets fucking brutal. And to be honest with you, you really start rooting for the pig, but this does have a lot of comedy, has a lot of gore, has some great special effects, but it is all in Korean. But shouldn't stop you from checking it out if you like your films, horror movies, it was fucking awesome. Brutal. Piggy, 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 piggy. And what's really great about it, it's a real great throwback, executed brilliantly for old school monster movies, stuff from the 70s and the 80s. You know, so like what maybe was the relic could have been when... It's just done great. It's a, it's a proper homage to Jaws in the woods with a pig in Korea. So if you haven't seen it, even heard of it, definitely check it out. It was £3. Brand new. Can't argue with that, can you? Right, while we're on about the foreign films, let's talk about a film I wrote a review for for nearly two years ago for Fast Forward Reviews and never got around filming it. I even went out of my way to get, in fact, Paul Ray, the pop movie guy, even got me Leon for it. I said, I need Leon. Find it at a charity shop or whatever, found it, cost us 10 pence. Now, the reason I got Leon, now Leon's called Leon in England, but everywhere else in the world it's called a professional. Now, you kind of need to know that. So this is 22 bullets. From the producers of Taken, the professional returns. Now, what does that imply? Now, it's Leon too, but in Britain, Leon's called Leon, not the professional. Everywhere else it's called the professional. Now, Jane Reno, who's famous for other movies like Godzilla. <laughs> Just call that Zilla, all right? Fuck you, movie pop guy. Now, this film is all in French. Released in the UK, my English dub, but all in French. Now, I want to talk to you about this because not only is this film good, there's some weird bits in this movie. So I have no idea where Leon is. There might be an outtake of this. I say it now, I will find Leon for the outtakes because I'll probably not get around to editing this for fucking months. I really enjoyed this film and it starts off, it's really slow paced. There's a big windy road scene at the start. The guy is taking his son and his dog shopping and you basically follow this family and you really get into it, you really do and it's really nicely filmed. Then all of a sudden it pulls John Wick on you. Now this is before John Wick. So if you like John Wick and you want to see a serious film, French style with comedic value, you might want to check this out. I will warn you though, when they get to the car park and there's a shootout, fuck me, it doesn't warn you how brutal this is going to be. If you think the dog death in John Wick is bad, the fucking dog death in this is something from Peter Jackson brain dead. It's like, fuck me. The sound, the fucking cry, the abomination of jelly. It's like fucking Rob Bottin returned out of the time and went, hey, hey, stick a, stick a dynamite up there. Boom, it's like, fuck. So it's pretty brutal and you don't know at that point that there he is a mob boss and it's like a big hit. Now, the film does follow a bit of Goodfellas and all that. It is really hard to keep up with the subtitles going on there. There's a lot of talking, who did it scenario, coming back like Mark for Death, I'm going to get them back and all this kind of stuff. And another thing I just want to point out, I've just read my notes as well as a bit of a jump. It's pretty hard to follow who's who because um, you're trying to keep up with all the dialogue and everyone is pretty typecast in um, suits and stuff and it's like who did this, who did this, who's on what channel, who's conspiring and conspiracy and all that kind of stuff. It was hard to follow up until the point he goes like fuck this, I know who did it, turns up at the house and when he turns up on his house on his moped, yeah the mob boss has a moped, he turns up and rather than just like wait outside the guy's gate and wait for his mum to sneak in, it's weird. There's a wall and then there's like this pylon thing which looks like a ladder but it's meant to be a pylon for legs or something and he just gets off right in queue and just steps off the wall he <laughs> you've got this fucking massive wall with barbed wire and electrode do you think you would do something about that random ladder that's sort of there but it's meant to be a pylon come on what's going on with that he then he then though gets stuck in barbed wire and it's like this big 
brutal fucking slow motion epilogue, whatever the fucking epilogue is, getting through barbed wire, and he's just like, uh, uh, and then he gets out of the barbed wire, and they bang, bang, you're dead, and then the film, said, what? But I did enjoy it. Um, as I say, I wrote a review for ages for it, and I just never got around to getting around to it. It's quite a very weird flip cover, actually. <laughs> there you go. So that's a pretty awesome in cover, actually. There he is, shot his car, and there's actually black and white with blood coming down. So you know what I mean? It went through all that effort to get a UK release, but didn't do the English dub. But if you like him, if you like Leon, if you like your gangster movie, and especially if you like John Wick, give it a go, definitely. Right, I have no idea what I'm going to do next. Um, <laughs> any suggestions, any shout outs? Wait, can't answer me, can you? Okay, the next movie is The Loch Ness. No, it's not. It's been a long time since I've seen that. I am planning on going to The Loch Ness later on this year with Annie. Bit of a mad road trip, and I've been there getting a few films, and... There's not that many Loch Ness movies to go, this is good, this is bad, this is what the fuck. Um, unlike the Bigfoot collection that is getting bigger, as well as the Nicolas Cage collection. But, let's talk about the evil beneath the Loch Ness. Now, it's in the other room, I watched it the other night, I wrote the review this morning for it. I thought it was going to be a fast forward review, but since I was struggling after all these foreign films, they make this baboonery, it's completely baboonery. I'm a massive fan of the Loch Ness Monster. And the myth, hence why I had the tattoo. We are long overdue for a fucking brilliant Loch Ness Monster movie. My idea is for a Loch Ness Monster movie. Either set it in the late 1800s or the early 1900s, where we don't have it, where we have like Sleepy Hollow kind of uh, thing going on, and there is a Loch Ness fucking monster. That could be set, if you set it right there in that point, you could get away with a good story like murder on the lock. Who's doing it? What the fuck is that? I think that's a really good idea. I mean, you could do it and cross it over and now with evidence and all that, but we need some it. We really do. Or you can go along the found footage, sort of. You know, stuck on a boat. I mean, look at that. There's a film for you. You want something different? Oh, yeah. Like, rather than all this technology. What, like, what would happen, right, if you were in the middle of the Loch Ness and all you had is a camera and the fucking Loch Ness monster was there and you couldn't fool anyone? There's a found footage for you. You know, I've seen stranger found footage films. So, yeah, it could work. Not my ideas, so there you go. So anyway, back to the evil beneath the Loch Ness. Now the theory is good, now this came along in early DVD release, so it was quite a big release, it was done by Prism, who are no longer with us, but it was just a big CGI on it, a CGI eye on the front cover, evil beneath the Loch Ness. Now fuck me, there's something wrong about this film, because I think the entire film wasn't even filmed in Scotland, except for some aerial shots. For some reason, this screams Canada, and we're not talking about the terror of the Loch Ness, I'll talk about that in the outtakes. But anyway, um, long story short, an earthquake happens and a flue opens up in the ba in the bowers, the bowers, deep in the water of the Loch Ness, it's 26 miles long, something like that. So anyway, an earthquake opens up and a flue opens up and some it comes through. Now as this happens, the lead scientist gets killed and they say they are all about packing up the next day, they don't know what's happened. And the people who are funded in the project, the science team, sends in the replacement. He turns up and then his wife turns up, who happens to be the boss above him. And there's a whole like, oh, what happened? And all of a sudden they see the real Loch Ness Monster and like, fuck me, there's a Loch Ness Monster. So they just want to make a documentary, cash in on the fact and all that kind of stuff. And it's just weird what happens. So they're going around making this documentary and more people are getting killed. There's more incidents. Now, the idea is good. The CGI, when you first see it, it's not too bad, but then again, you see it again, and again, and again. The same shot, over again, flips left and right, goes backwards, and it's the same fucking shot. And then there's a spectacular one where it pops out the water, and some guy's in a dinghy, and it looks like some kind of fucking alien cartoon. What the fuck was that? And they used that for the DVD menu as well, is it? Now, the Loch Ness Monster looks like a massive dragon without the wings. It's got a big head swimming around the lock. It's meant to be huge. And, you know, it's got some eerie factors and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's like, oh, the town folk don't believe you. I was laughing when I watched this, though, because the guy who's in charge who won't let them go on the lock and stuff is the same guy who plays the guard in Mr Bean. I watched Mr Bean a few weeks ago. I said, that's him when he's a lot younger. He's still a twat there. Well, it comes off as a twat anyway. Anyway, off that rant. It's got, the acting is borderline. Borderline at best. There's even one bit where a helicopter lands and the people jump out and run off and you think, that's totally green screen. Did they not even go to the Loch Ness to film this? 
But if you've never seen or heard of it, definitely worth checking out. It is definitely better than the Ted Danson love story, like the when the, the water kelpie hides underneath the Loch Ness Castle and it's a big love story. And then, oh, he makes a discovery of the lifetime. I mean, that came along in early CGI. I remember the trailer when they were like, you saw it rising up from the shadows. You think, wow, look at that. And think, because it's a time Jurassic Park. And it's just like, oh, there we go, what happened there? Like, come on, where's the myth? That's what I love about the Loch Ness, the myth. You know, is it really there? Is it not? Who cares? It's a myth. You can believe. It's like Mulder wants to believe. I want to believe. Right, I'll say goodbye now because there's going to be a quick few outtakes, but I need to move the camera. That's, there's an outtake then. So here's an outtake. There will be a final outtake. I fucking hell. I didn't even know I had that on me. <laughs> yeah. The Langoliers. Look at this. Cover of that. It's an airplane in turmoil. The Langoliers. It's back. Stephen King's The Last of the Layers. Who directed this? That's a question. Tom Holland. Teleplay. We've done as a TV show. Anyways, there will be an outtake with Leon months down the line when I eventually get around to filming. That is the evil beneath the Loch Ness I've just been talking about there. 60 feet of prehistoric terror. And the other movie I was on about, the evil between <laughs> the Loch Ness terror. Now, quick synopsis of this film. The movie starts and the Loch Ness monster turns up straight away, walking along the beach just seeing what's going on. Then the movie jumps as a Loch Ness monster moves to Canada and the rest of the movie happens in Canada within the first 10 minutes. What the fuck? Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Okay, here's an outtake for you for Baboonery. Um, when I went to look and I was looking around and I was like, right, where is Leon? And I was literally thinking, where, where have I put Leon? And I was just going to grab it and I was just going to stop filming, grab Leon and do a skip with it because I was like, where's Leon at? Where is Leon at? Paul Ray got us at where is it? And there it is. Right there, you never guess where it was. It was underneath my bed. I found it last night when I was looking for the remote. Now, I could have like waited to go looking for this to later on, months later, when I get around to editing the video and go, right, where's Leon? And I probably would have had to buy it again because that was wedged down the side of the bed. I was going to watch it, forgot about it, and it fell. So thank you very much, Paul Ray, for picking me that up. So I may as well appear in this baboonery wearing classic Joker, uh, Jack Nicholson Joker, and he fled your Joker t shirts. Very random. Outtake. Okay, here's an outtake for you. You will not believe how many different times I've tried to film this video I'm about to talk to you about. Um, every time I've done it, there's been some problems with the audio, or I just couldn't get it right. And basically, we're going on about the whole t-shirt thing. So I've been wearing the Joker t-shirt with Heath Ledger on there, comic book there. I'm sure there was just an outtake of me popping up wearing my Jack Nicholson one. And my phone's decided to go on Twitter when I'm trying to get a picture. But this is what I was talking about. I was watching this footage back, and here it is. Here's a picture of me, Holly, and Amy in um, LA. Can you see that coming right close? Holly, Amy, and me. That's a picture of me in LA. I think we're going to Compton. Um, some video footage right there, driving in Compton. Just driving in Compton, really. I get rid of that. Um, now, basically, what freaked us out was the Gods of Egypt review I did when I was wearing the same sausage party video freaked me out. And I was sitting there editing the baboonery and I got tagged in that picture and I'm actually wearing the same Joker t-shirt eight years later and it just totally fucking freaks me out and I've tried multiple times multiple times to speak and also do that review so review outtake fucking end of this baboonery thanks for watching goodbye